So welcome level three mechanics and physicists and NCEA physicists to the equations of simple harmonic motion. So recalling from our previous lesson for an oscillating system, in this particular case a pendulum, the acceleration is directed towards the displacement x from the equilibrium position. Or for order for SHM to occur, the acceleration is proportional to negative the displacement. So thinking about a circle, if you walk around the circle once, what's your total distance? It's 2 pi r, roughly about 6.28 meters. So going back also to our circular motion, we can define a circular distance in terms of a generic radius r by how many radians are there in one full revolution, 2 pi radians. Okay, so that means we can introduce the concept of angular velocity again to SHM, or simple harmonic motion, because it's repetitive, just like circular motion. So the, capital, uh, the period, capital T, is the time for an object to complete one oscillation. Okay, so going from equilibrium down uh, in terms of displacement, back through equilibrium, then up into another uh, maximum displacement, back down into equilibrium. That's one oscillation. And basically it's returning back to a starting position. So this can also give the angle of velocity omega. So you can link it to circular motion as a model. So in terms of angle of velocity, uh, we can incorporate now omega into the phase differences of both displacement, velocity, and acceleration to start deriving the SHM equations. Okay, so as acceleration is proportional to the negative of the displacement for an object of a certain mass, acceleration, at least for a spring, will equal the spring constant divided by the mass times the displacement, and therefore the time period will be 2 pi the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant, where omega is the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass. Okay, so for linear motion, distance over time gives velocity, so for omega, remembering, it's going to be 2 pi over capital T, or 2 pi radians. So therefore, Omega will be 2 pi over the time period for one uh, revolution, or one oscillation. Uh, and since frequency equals 1 over the time period, angular velocity for a SHM motion is the frequency. So it's uh, omega times 2 pi, the frequency of that one oscillation. Okay, so then we've got the three graphs of SHM. Okay, the first one is displacement, which has an amplitude. Okay, so that's the maximum displacement, either negative or positive, which is x naught. A time period, uh, capital T, which is a time for one full oscillation. And the graph might start at zero, which will be the equilibrium position, but it can also start at any point uh, in the oscillation. Okay, and if the motion starts at both, or either the positive or negative amplitude, uh, this is where the displacement uh, is the maximum. You use different equations. Okay, so then moving on to the graph uh, of SHM velocity, you'll see uh, that it's actually at a phase by 90 degrees compared to the distance time graph. Uh, and we know that we can determine the velocity from the gradient of the displacement uh, time graph. So therefore the motion uh, in terms of velocity is fastest at the equilibrium position, okay, when x equals zero. Therefore the velocity is a, max, uh, a maximum when the displacement is zero. Then we have uh, the final uh, equation, or well, sorry, final graph, which is the acceleration graph. So that's basically going to be a reflection, actually, of the displacement time graph in the x-axis. Okay, so 180 degrees reflection uh, out of phase. Okay, so the displacement time graph is uh, out of phase with the acceleration time graph by 180 degrees. So that means that when a mass has a positive displacement, the acceleration is negative, which is fine, that's what we need for SHM. And it's also 90 degrees out of phase with the velocity time graph. So that means that when you take the acceleration from a velocity time graph, that means that the maximum value for acceleration is when the motion is at a maximum displacement. And at a minimum, or zero, when the displacement uh, is at zero. So this is where our phasor diagram can also be assisting you. Okay, so you'll notice that the three graphs are out of phase by 90 degrees from each other. Um, and so that means you can elicit the following results, which we see in the table. Okay, so when time uh, or the time period um, is um, beginning, 
okay? Then the phase angle is two pi, the displacement is, is at, at its maximum, for example, then the velocity is zero, and the acceleration is going to be negative, okay? Uh, at the time period, a quarter through the time period, then the phase angle will be 90 degrees, or pi over two. The displacement will be zero, okay? Um, so it'll be an equilibrium position. Velocity will be a negative maximum, and the acceleration will be zero. At um, halfway through the, the uh, oscillation, the phase angle will be pi. The displacement now will be negative displacement, maximum amplitude, and the velocity will be zero, and the acceleration now will be positive acceleration, maximum acceleration. And then we have the three uh, quarters of the time period. Phase angle will be three pi over two. The displacement now will be uh, zero. We'll be back to a starting point. Uh, and it will be positive uh, velocity uh, as it races through the equilibrium position and acceleration will also be zero. And from that we can divide or derive our final equations. Okay, so we know that for SHM to occur the acceleration has to be negative the displacement. So from a system starting at equilibrium, those are the equations. And you'll note actually that um, the velocity uh, if you do take uh, calculus, is the derivative of the um, displacement, and acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, and so it is for a system starting at maximum displacement. The important point to note is that in NCEA, x0, uh, the uh, maximum displacement is given the value a, which is essentially just the amplitude. But you should all uh, be able to use those equations and apply them to questions involving simple harmonic motion.